And good evening, welcome. I'm Mark Pinto, the Adult Services Director at Phoenixville Public Library here in Chester County, Pennsylvania. It's great to have so many of you on with us tonight. I hope you're ready to be inspired and uplifted. We're very happy to have with us tonight, Nancy Schwartz. She is a local author, teacher, and uh, now actress, and also the mother of a very special little boy whose name is Alex. Nancy has chronicled her relationship with her son in her new book, Up Not Down Syndrome, Uplifting Lessons Learned from Raising a Son with Trisomy 21. And in the chat, Nancy has put a, a URL where you can find more information about her book. And she's also listed the places uh, both online and uh, brick and mortar where you can purchase the book. There's also a copy here at uh, Phoenixville Library to uh, check out as well. Um, so with that, we will turn things over to Nancy. Nancy, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, it helps to unmute. Um, so happy Chinese New Year. My friend from China said it's the year of the ox. So may we all have a healthy, happy, prosperous year. And it's celebrated tonight and for the next two weeks. So thanks for taking time to be on my Zoom. Um, feel free to drop in and out or mute if you need to, to eat or leave, watch Jeopardy, whatever you need to do. Um, I learned in my flux pedagogy class through Penn GSE, you have to keep it real and be flexible. So this is actually my bedtime. <laughs> Usually I get up early to work out. So I'm kind of going outside my comfort zone. Uh, the pandemic um, trauma and the racial inequality trauma in our country has taught me a lot about getting out of my comfort zone. So I'm um, using Zoom. Please understand that technology is not my comfort zone. Um, so I feel like this is a brave space to share that. Um, but anyway, bear with me. <laughs> I want to read a little bit from my book, and I'm going to start with my chapter on shock. Can everybody hear me? I hope, I hope everyone can hear me okay. <laughs> despite, this is from the book, despite its difficulties, this labor was the easiest of all three boys. Well, maybe not the labor. That was hard. But with Josh and Sam, the delivery was excruciating. It took forever. And the pushing was agonizing. I almost couldn't bear it. With Alex, all that was required were a few pushes and he was out. His shoulders were out and he was on my belly. Internally, I danced. I realized that externally, something was terribly wrong. The nurses took him from me. Suddenly, a quiet deafening fell over the room. Like first snow. 10 years later, as I edit this passage, it is snowing outside. I've come to understand that the tranquility that precedes what we view as a storm can also be nature's quiet acknowledgement of a new innocent beginning. <clears throat> I've come to understand a lot more about the wonder of the unexpected and sometimes inconvenient, but we cannot know life's later lessons in the moment. We can only be where we are. My heart went into free fall. It landed with a thud in my gut. What was going on? I was desperate to know. And at the same time, I didn't want to. I wanted to keep dancing. I wanted to bask in the accomplished glow of afterbirth. Dr. Crate reached for my hand, held it. His ears, eyes, and neck are characteristic of down babies. Down what? As I tried poorly to process the word, it felt as if the doctor were speaking from miles away. I strained to listen through the distance, facts, figures, intermittent words, statistics, a wave of fearful questions. I wondered about all of those weeks lying there getting ultrasounds after ultrasounds. Did the doctor know ahead of time that something was wrong with my third son? And if so, why hadn't he told me? I thought all the additional monitoring had to do with the fact that I was 40 and advanced maternal age and therefore needed closer supervision. 
supervision. I would have to look after a baby who was, my mind roved its recesses for a way to think about my third son, but I had not yet acquired the language to explain. Trisomy 21 is Alex's diagnosis. The medical designation refers to a chromosomal anomaly that causes a distinctive set of physical characteristics and lifelong challenges. Trisomy 21 impacts approximately 5,000 of the babies born every year. I didn't know that then. I didn't know so many things. I felt like the only one in the world with a child who would fail to live up to all the hopes and dreams I'd had for him. How could I love an imperfect child? How did my body produce this unlovable baby? How could we live our lives in the face of this soul crushing information? I was devastated. I didn't know how to continue living when all my dreams for my youngest were slowly withering within me. <laughs> Lessons Alex taught me. When you think your life as you know it is over, know that you can choose to embrace your current situation as the beginning of something wonderful. People strangers, new friends, doctors, therapists, and teachers will respond to your child the way that you respond to your child. If you're struggling to respond to your child the way you want, it helps to lean on those you trust for invaluable insights. Say the serenity prayer every day. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Differences can be beautiful. Love has no limits. Love creates strength. And then this is Alex's voice. Where are my parents? They come every day. I hope they're coming. I miss them. I miss my brothers too. I wish mom and dad would stop being sad. I'm happy to be here in the world. I think they're upset because of me. It does not make sense. I wish these people would take these wires off of me. I'm sick of this tube in my nose with the hurricane sound of oxygen. Why is it so noisy here? The beeps are giving me a headache. And so that was just my chapter on shock. And the next chapter I wanted to just share a little bit of is up bow, down bow. And I'm gonna just share that real quick. The form came home with a question, which instrument would you like your child to learn? Alex does not walk yet or talk yet. He finds it challenging to hold a pencil. Josh played the cello. I played and still sometimes play the cello. I wished Alex could play the cello. I filled in the box marked cello. Another form showed up the next day. It instructed me to rent a quarter size cello, really? I rushed to the music and art store in Wayne, Pennsylvania. I need a quarter size cello, a bow, some rosin and Suzuki book one, I told the young man behind the counter. He wrote Alex in big black letters on a tag and attached the tag to the soft instrument case. I thought about the letters we'd hung on my second and third son's door and smiled at the inner acknowledgement of how our lives with Alex have far exceeded our expectations. Alex has exceeded our expectations. But as I left the music store clutching Alex's instrument to me, I was far from confident and yet, the picture on the next page shows Alex taking his first lesson with his cello teacher, April Beard. The joy, the wonder and love are seen in his expression. April is the embodiment of all I had hoped for. And I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> she sends me multi-paragraph emails about pizzicato, piano plucking with a soft dynamic level bow holding, cello font versus no tool, Alex's attention span, percussion on the cello, music, and more. 
To get emails like this about our youngest son fills me with a joy that cannot be put into words. Alex is just another fourth grader learning the cello. Each week after receiving April's email, it takes me a day to respond. I remain that blown away. My doubts eviscerated by awe and gratitude. Lessons from Alex taught me. You can do anything you want. Extraordinary teachers are everywhere. Learning is easy when you apply yourself and are willing to try new ways of understanding. Music is magic. Just because something seems impossible, it might not be. And this is Alex's voice. Me, I get to play this beautiful cello. You think I can do it? You believe in me? I get a chance to show what I can learn. Thank you. I am amazing. I won't let you down. Watch what I can do. Look, mom, I will make you proud. And that's Alex with his first friend, Fiona. <laughs> so I share that because I'm currently working um, with a co-author who is Alex's cello teacher. Um, we're working on a new book called Up Bow, Down Bow. And I wanted to share that with you because I'm so thrilled that how much Alex has done. I want to share a video collage of what he's done these last two years. So bear with me <laughs> and let me know if there's a problem hearing it. Oh, the don't forget to wind it back. Don't forget to wind it back. Called a double stop when you play two strings at once. Okay, you want to show me which way is a down bow? How about an up bow? How about a down bow? Can you show me a down bow? Yeah, that's a down bow. Up bow. 
can see what seems impossible is sometimes possible. So my book, um, Up Not Down Syndrome, is structured with our story for each chapter, um, how I felt about having a baby with this diagnosis, um, the lessons that Alex has taught me, and then in Alex's voice, if he could speak, what he would say. And each chapter is set up that way. Um, I was devastated when he was born and have since realized that Alex is just as much loved as my other children, Josh and Sam. And I wrote this book because I want the world to know how much I love Alex. And in the words of Barbara Bowman, um, he is a source of joy and pain like any other child. And I started the book Up Not Down Syndrome in the NICU um, right after he was born. A wonderful friend, Grace, visited me there and she told me three things. She said that um, Alex is, um, an addition that he wasn't taking anything away from Josh and Sam, my other children. Um, she said that people will respond to your son the way that you respond to your son. And she said to say the serenity prayer every day. And I learned um, from that and I started to think about up, not down. And I just thought like, that's a great way to, to write about this. And I, it just, I used that through the years. It took me 10 years and I kept my thoughts in a notebook from one of my students from Lithuania's parent. And I kept writing and talking to other writers. And I just figured rejection was part of the process. It was 10 years, very many, lots of iterations. Wonderful editor, Dara Lise, who I believe is on here, um, helped me to make it more concise. I've been blessed to be on TV NBC with Lucy Bustamante. And I was on a radio interview for Trade Talk Radio Europe with Selena McKenzie. I was in a podcast interview with Dara Lise for her new um, podcast, Demystifying Diversity, for the book, um, and Anne-Marie Jones, and another new podcast called Thus Spoke Wisdom by Fermi Barbola. And the book has appeared in the Jewish Exponent in an article by Andy Gottlieb and the Korean Philadelphia Times, um, seeing these people, meeting them, and seeing my words in Korean, in Korean. <laughs> 
um, the beauty of the words from the reporter Alex Kim and then reading his translation in English were just, I don't even have words to tell you how beautiful that was. And hearing from my friend in the UK that my book made it across the pond all the way to England, no words, it's, it's everything to me. So that was really special. Um, what else? I want to tell you anything? Huh. Um, Alex was 10 when the book came out. He's 12 now. Um, his health is pretty, he's doing really well. His epilepsy, which he started having at age three, is getting better. It's not completely gone. He still does have some seizures, but we use a medicine um, made of CBD, which is helping. Um, what else? <laughs> Um, I had a new experience of being in a movie recently that was a lot of fun. Um, it's by Arlen uh, Entertainment and the movie's called Elementary. I loved meeting other actors and doing something different outside my comfort zone. Um, during this time in the virus and all the uh, racial inequality and challenges, it's, it's exhausting. And so the lessons in this book help me still now, even with all of this going on and they keep me up and I hope they keep you up and that you enjoy the book. Um, what else? <laughs> I think if you want to follow me, you can also on my Instagram at Kashti, which means my rainbow in Hebrew, two, number two. And I can put that in the chat too. If you want to follow Alex on Instagram, you can do that too. I can figure out how to do the chat. <laughs> and I guess if you have questions, let me know. Okay. Feel free to unmute yourselves, folks, and you can turn your video screens on, too, to uh, ask a question. If you're using a phone to dial in, star six is how you unmute yourself. I have a question. Hi, Nance. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Hi. What is, what is your favorite part of the book? Do you have a, a part, part of the book that's your favorite that you wrote? Oh my gosh. Favorite? It's such a good question. I think my favorite part is the voice, if Alex could speak throughout the book, because he doesn't, he's never said one word yet. So I love thinking about when he gets that ability to speak. And he's right now using eye gaze technology where he looks at the computer and it tells him what he's trying to say. So I'm really anxious to hear that. And I think that would be my favorite part right now because I would love to know like once he starts speaking, what he's gonna say. <laughs> and also just the fact of how I turned from being like, my life is over to like, this is one of our greatest blessings, just like Josh and Sam. Thank you for that question, Jackie. Great to see you out there in Zoom universe. Great to see you too. Can I ask a question? Sure. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> so you mentioned what, the um what your friend said to you is as advice what advice would you give to a new mom that has discovered their child has thank you for, thank you for that question <laughs> thank you i would probably give them that same piece of advice those three things that the child is not taking anything away from any other children in their family if they have other children um that the people in the world will respond to your child how you will respond and to say that serenity prayer. And I think that's good for a lot of challenges right now with all of our things going on in our world with the pandemic and the trauma of racial inequality and all those things happening. I think sometimes those serenity prayers are helpful because it just, it helps us. I would also add what Barbara Bowman said that it's a child and it's a source of pain and joy just like any other child. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> Um, Nancy, how, how was it for your kids adjusting to the new baby? That's my sister, Susie. <laughs> um, so I think it was a process. And just like when there's a new child in your family, and I know you have six children and you have many grandchildren, it's a process. And so I think just like adding another person in your family is a process. But there was the added layer of, you know, therapies because he had occupational therapy on the third day of his life, you know, therapies and meetings, those things added. And I think at some times in this um, process, I may have had too much attention just on Alex. And I think looking back, I wish I had had more even attention to Josh, Sam and Alex, but you only know what you know when you know it. So <laughs> good question though, thank you. Hi, Nancy. 
Jessica. Hello. I have a question. You always seem to be on the edge of the newest thing and advancing and so much that you do for Alex. I'm curious if there are anything new that you're hearing about that you haven't tried yet or that other people are talking about or what might be next or, or is is it good the way it, it is right now? Are you happy with everything? Well, <laughs> thank you for asking that question. You know, this new technology that we're using with the eye gaze where he looks at the word and it helps you. Um, and I think you were actually the person that told me about grounding, you know, sticking him outside barefooted in the ground is something I never would have thought of in my life. <laughs> but that was like an unbelievable, amazing thing. And it, it is wonderful for everyone to be grounded. So that's something I'd like to learn more about and particularly foods that affect him and how they affect him. I'd like to study that more. And you're really someone who knows a lot about that. So I might, you know, tap you up for that more. <laughs> and I think I'm always open to learn. And especially with the epilepsy, I'd love to get that under control. And of course, you know, I just want to get him out and about as much as possible. And right now with our trauma of the pandemic, it's really difficult. Um, so I'm looking forward to a time when he doesn't have to be masked up and we can really embrace the social piece too. So that's a great question. And, you know, learning about CBD and cannabis from Paige Figgy and her family and the Stanley brothers and all of those things that I've learned, I want to thank social media. It's been great to connect people that way. So thanks for asking that question. I want to continue to learn and grow and hopefully do better. Well, you're an inspiration, Nancy back at you. Thank you. <laughs> Nancy, I know you've done so much with Alex. So why music? Why music? Well, you can see my cello collecting dust in the background here. And I just love music. My mom and my family, we all love music. And I feel like it's a way for him to just share beauty with the world that he can give. And I just, I love it. I find when he listens, if it's disco music, Madonna, whatever it is, he like will rock out because he's learned about it so much. And it's, it's powerful. And there's been studies that it can open up parts of your brain that may not be open. And then there's some kids that hate music and don't want any music. So it really depends on your child, but for him, he really loves it. And I love it too. Thanks for that question. Great question. <laughs> I ask a second question, Nance. Um, yes, Jackie, go for it. Okay. Um, and would you like to see my picture? I'll, I'll start my video because I have to look at you. <laughs> Um, so you take care of Alex and you're taking care of the kids and of course your husband. So how do you take care of yourself? Oh, such a great question. And it's so important, especially right now with the trauma going on in our world, like so much so. So thank you for asking that. Um, I'm really working hard at meditation. I also try to wake up and think of gratitude. Think of what am I thankful for today? And maybe just breathing in and out. Maybe that's what I do. Or, you know, in times of not a pandemic, I might have more manicures and pedicures just to have time for myself, getting together with friends. And now I do it at a distance, <laughs> maybe in the park or somewhere far away from someone, but, you know, just taking carving time out for yourself, whatever it is that makes you happy and gives you joy. Because I think the more joy that we give ourselves, the more we have to give other people. Thank you for that question. Thanks. Good one. I have a question, Nancy. So I'm, my editor. Hi. Um, I'm curious to know, is, what has surprised you the most, like since the book has come out, can you talk about some of the reactions or some of the, the things that have happened as a result of the book that have sort of surprised you or, or, or been interesting that people might want to hear about? So there's two things. One is I got a message on social media. A woman had a baby in her family with trisomy 21. And her other child is in prison and asked for books on Trisomy 21 to help understand what it is. And I have chills now thinking that she sent him my book and it makes me feel like maybe that made a difference for that family. And maybe they're gonna look at things differently than they would have if it were like a textbook version of that. Like the one I got in the hospital that was, I couldn't even open it. Like it just was upsetting. So that's one. Another, I went out to breakfast with Alex one day, just him and me. And this pregnant woman came up with tears that she was having a baby like Alex. And she was so thrilled that I was out to breakfast because she thought like, she's not gonna be able to leave the house. And to see me out to breakfast living my life made her feel like, you know what? 
it's going to be okay. And she just kept crying. And then I cried. And then Alex was like, come on, get me in the car. But like, it was one of those moments. And I told her about my book that I felt like maybe if people see there's a, you know, it's possible to have a challenge and keep going and, and do your stuff. And, you know, we're not like gold medal winners. We're not going to join special Olympics and make and get a gold medal, but we can definitely live our life or maybe we will. I don't know. But the idea of, of having that path and, and making it yours. Thank you for asking that. It's a great question. Nancy, can I ask a question? Oh, thank you. Hi, Noriko. Hi. Can you explain um, during the pandemic, some of the things you've been doing with Alex just to get him kind of away from the screens? Yes, because you know what? The screen time, like sometimes when we had virtual school, such a great question. He would like put his head down because you know he's not an IT professional and it's developmentally so inappropriate for him to be on screen for six hours a day. Okay. The times at lunch, I'd tell the teacher for special ed, we're not coming back. We're gonna take a nature walk and we'd go to winter there and we just take a walk and look at the leaves and just get off of the computer. And sometimes I'm gonna tell all my family to do that, but yeah, no, it's really helpful because too much screen time is not good for anyone and particularly him. He would get very upset and tired. Um, we also still would swim because that's his favorite form of exercise. And he can do like 30 laps in an Olympic sized pool. So getting him in a water situation where he can move and exercise his body is good for his mind and his epilepsy and everything. So those are two ways. And also just maybe getting out and just grabbing a latte and putting our mask on and taking a walk and being out and about in the town. And then not really seeing too many friends, but right now he's in school, but they use a lot of the protocols of masking and distance and cleansers and, and all that. But that's a great question. And it's so important, not just for Alex, but I think for all children, because it's just completely developmentally inappropriate to be on screen for so many hours each day. It's, it's just too hard. Thank you. Nancy? Hey, Hi. I, have, I have a question. Um, in, in addition, to Alex, because of there's so many avenues, you're always busy um, beyond caring for Alex. Again, someone else had mentioned it, your family, before your teaching, your writing. Where do you go to for inspiration? Oh, such a great question. Um, you know, if you look at my book in the very back, there is a whole bibliography of books that I loved, that I've read, and like authors like Rabbi Walpi or Stephen Covey or um, Wayne Dyer or you know there's Louise Hay, <laughs> but there's also friends that I have and I'm, a lot of them are on this Zoom. <laughs> um, and then there's family members like my mom and my sister and my husband and my, my sons, Josh and Sam, they inspire me a lot. Um, and I think just, you know, my faith in, in God and like a higher power um, but all of that together really, really helps to keep me uplifted and positive, even when things are hard. And there are days that are harder than others. I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes I get really tired of this situation right now, but um, another situation. <laughs> but, you know, ultimately, I think it's a choice. It's like an inside job. Like we can either wake up and say, good morning, God. Or we can say, like Wayne Dyer would say, good God, it's morning. It's like our choice. How do we approach it? How do we decide mm. our choice? Sometimes. <laughs> Thank you for that question. It's a great question. Thank you. Nancy. Hey. Uh, hi. How does Josh, I see Josh is online. So how does Josh and Sam, <laughs> see his face, work with Alex? So they work with him in the sense that they can. They are so super busy and such high achievers. Right now, they are just like standing on their head trying to get out college stuff and figure out which college is college going to open. <laughs> and then they both work as lifeguards at the gym. So um, they're busy with their jobs. They're trying to apply to colleges. And Josh is in college trying to get some college stuff done. Sam's trying to be in the honor society, helping out the special ed groups. I mean, there's they are so busy, but when they do have time with him, they will swim oftentimes with him because that's a place there's no gravity and they can all be like on that even field together. And the beauty of their smiles together is just, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I think Alex really loves them best of everybody um, when, they, when they have the time to be with him. But I try really hard, really hard, not to just say you must be with him now because I don't want them to feel um, that it's like a, 
a must. It's I want to have like a regular kind of a situation where it's not you must help me now, although sometimes I do. <laughs> but for the most part, I want them to feel a freedom to be siblings, not not like that they're caretakers, but that they're um, free to be loving in the way that's comfortable for them with a limit that they can hear what they need to. Thank you, great question. <laughs> No one else has asked this yet, uh, Nancy. Can you talk a little bit about how you got your book published? Oh my God, it was so hard. <laughs> so I will, definitely. Um, so I, I mentioned I kept a notebook. I taught English as a second language and this mom from Lithuania, Amelia's mom, gave me this beautiful leather bound notebook and I kept ideas and language that I wanted to hold. And I kept making iterations of this book over years and I had had people read it. My husband was so sick of reading my book. <laughs> and then I would send it out and people would say, no one's gonna read a memoir, it sounds boring. And you know, it's just a lot of rejection. And I think writing, if you really wanna publish something, you have to be able to deal with the rejection, like a bad date. Like it's just, you have to keep trying until you find it. And then I don't know how God like provided this amazing editor, Darylise, who's on here. And she's like, well, what's your message? What do you want to say? And it was so helpful. She was a mix of perfect like beauty, intelligence, integrity. Like she just helped me so much to get my ideas of what I wanted to do. And she helped me to, to really make that concise. And I think that made the difference. And again, I think networking with other people, going to writing conferences, you know, studying writing at Teachers College helped me a lot with Catherine Bomer. Um, she's, she's an amazing, amazing writing teacher. Um, lots of writing teachers at Columbia that I really loved. And my sister, of course, she's written seven books. Um, she's got a new book coming in the spring about the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, just all these beautiful, beautiful people that helped to help make this possible. So it's inspiring. And for this next book, I'm hoping we can find a home for that one too. Thanks, great question. Talented family, someone just put in chat. Yeah, I'm horrible at keeping up with the chat and technology, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thanks. Anyone else with a question, comment? Josh. <laughs> hey, Mom, um, and hello, everyone else. I just <laughs> want to say that I'm, uh, I'm proud of you for doing this. This is a really good thing. And uh, Thanks. That's, Thank that's, you. Really, that's really it. Um, I read it. Um, everyone else should read it and buy it, you know, because... <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, but no, it, it's really good. So. I'll pay you later. Thank you, Josh. No, really. Thank you. Thanks for being the one. I yeah, wish you could hear. Thank you. And everyone should buy the book. Thank you. All right. Love you. Thank you. Nancy, can I ask you another question? I don't know where you went. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> um, can you explain? some of the ways the district has supported you with Alex's education, like pre-pandemic? Yeah, I mean, initially, I think they thought I was a lunatic because I was really a little crazy in the beginning because it went from preschool where I could hug him every day to like, you have to make an appointment. So that was hard initially to, to navigate. I think I was thrown out by the security guard like initially in kindergarten. <laughs> um, but later, um, recently when he's been more, um, you know, after kindergarten, now he's in sixth grade, we've really learned to work together as a team because without that, I don't think this would have worked at all. And I mentioned that when cyber, you know, virtual got difficult, I would tell his teacher, we need to take a break and they would respect that. And I think it's that mutual respect and that idea of working together that's really made the difference, especially now during the pandemic even more so. And because, you know, he doesn't walk yet, he doesn't talk yet, he can't do anything for himself, you know, I would explain that we can't do eight pages of calculus at night with him. You know, we, if we get his teeth brushed and we get him to bed, that's like a really good night sometimes. You know, we wouldn't be able to do any of that without the help of his nurse, Tracy, of course, who's on here somewhere, um, you know, during the week. But it's, it's a lot. And I think, you know, that idea of just really being respectful of each other, like the district being respectful of our situation, but also us being respectful of, you know, the fact that they're limited with limited resources and working together. It's a great question. Thank you. So I will throw one more out there to you, Nancy. E even though your husband is hiding his face, uh, <laughs> talk about the changes of the relationship between you and Mike. 
Thanks for asking that because you know- I know like, it's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking that. You know, I think marriage in itself is never an easy thing and it's always a process and it's a relationship like every other. And, you know, again, it's about respecting each other and our delightful differences and our soothing similarities as our friend Moonsong would say. I think it's all about also at the end of the day, having a sense of humor um, you know, and, and being able to laugh together, but also carving out time for yourselves, just like you would carve out time um, for yourself, but also together as a couple. And I think that's really important. Um, and also being yourself, I think that's important. But um, ultimately, I think it's supporting each other through the good times and the bad times. We've lost um, Michael's mom, who's very close to our family. Um, my mom's moved away right now in New York. So, you know, there's a lot to navigate, but um, at the end of the day, you know, I think if you're loving towards each other that, that you can get through most, most things. Thanks for asking that. It's a really good question. And a lot of times that's not so easy. <laughs> Anyone else? Lots of good questions tonight. Thank you for everyone for participating. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Love you all. Thank you so much for making the time to come out to be here on this Zoom. <laughs> More screen time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nancy, Nancy for sharing. Yeah, go ahead. Can I say something? My video will not turn back on for some reason, but um, it's Valerie. <laughs> hey, Valerie. And Hi. It's wonderful seeing you, your family, your friends. I just want to say your book is an absolute inspiration for, you know, I think anything in life, um, I just, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you and everything that you do for you, for your family. And um, I just wanted to say that, thank you so much. I appreciate you and I appreciate all of you and you. Thank you so much. It's really beautiful words. Thank you. There's your video. <laughs> I Thanks, guess I'm Nancy. on now. Thank Hi, you. thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you again, Nancy. Thanks for having me, Mark. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for sharing your story both tonight and in your book. And uh, again, this video will be up on the Phoenixville Library's YouTube channel either tomorrow or sometime early next week. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening and take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Mom. Love you.